overall, I think we're going to concentrate on the first five in the betting in this race. I'd be very surprised if anything else uh, was to win the race. I'm going to start um, with my selection, which is the Nicky Henderson train Constitution Hill. Towards the third last, and it's Dysart Dynamo being joined on the inner by John Bond. Constitution Hill stalks them going smoothly in third. Five or six lengths away to Kilcruet, then bring on the night with the yellow sleeves to Shall We Have One More in JPR1. And John Bond took over, and Dysart Dynamo crashes out and in peace shall we have one more a Dysart Dynamo is up and now it's the Henderson pair who are left clear heading towards two out John Bond the white cap black cap for Constitution Hill who saunters alongside the penultimate flight Constitution Hill and John Bond inseparable they're six lengths ahead of Kill Crutch who's trying to gather them in back in third but Constitution Hill sweeps majestically into the lead rounding the final corner he opens up by four five six lengths John Bond is chasing his stable mate but he's surely chasing in vain Constitution Hill down towards the last in the Supreme and he's over safely and he's over clear and it's a yawning gap back to John Bond and Kilcrut it's first strike to Henderson it's first strike to England in the colours of Michael Buckley Constitution Hill a class apart wins the Supreme John Bond his stable mate makes it a Henderson 1-2 Kilcrut is third bring on the night is back in fourth My selection for this race is Honeysuckle. She's a tremendous mare and I wouldn't I would love to see nothing more than her going on and retaining her title. So Honeysuckle is my selection for the champion hurdle. Epitant would be my each way selection, also in the champion hurdle. Freewheeling now, they've got three left to jump in the Unibet champion hurdle. They appreciate it has made just about every inch so far. Not so sleepy at his quarters and Zana here racing a very close third. Honeysuckle climbing all over them at this stage in fourth and Epitant is up her in a right alongside. The mares stare each other in the eye as they bear down on the third last. Appreciated and Zana here landing first and second. Adagio made a bad mistake as we come a bit outpaced. Now Honeysuckle comes between horses moving up threateningly. Epitant is on their heels as they close in on the second last. Less than half a mile to go. And Honeysuckle is moving through to dispute it with Appreciated and Zana here. Three in the line as they make the final turn. Epitant in fourth chasing being asked. And now Blackmore shakes up the mare. And Honeysuckle strides on. She bounds two lengths clear. Chased by Appreciated the green sleeves. Then Zana here. Epitant is running on under pressure. It's Honeysuckle down towards the last. Pursued by Epitant. Two former winners. Honeysuckle defending a crown. Lands a couple clear. Epitant untidy. Zana here in third. So was staying on fourth. But it's Honeysuckle in full bloom again. She stays on powerfully. Back to back wins of the Unimet champion hurdle. Honeysuckle again. Epitant chased her in vain. Zana here was third. And then Sawa, glory and fortune. Not so sleepy and appreciated. She's won for the ages and she'll always find a way. 15 out of 15 under rules and two champion hurdles. What a performance from Honeysuckle and Rachel Black. Uh, what do I fancy in the race, now you're asking, is a, it's a tricky question. It's not a race I'm overly strong on anything. But if I had to give a selection, I know it's a bit short in the race, looking at the market now, and seeing it's the second favourite, you know, so you're looking at probably odds on each way shot for a place, is Statler. Yeah, by far and away, it's the most interesting one for me in this race. As they run to the home turn, and it's still Run Wild Fred. Statler has come alongside, but he's still a neck behind him. They are ten lengths more than that, Kia Vanilla. Two play fences to go. Statler, Patrick Mullins on the left, has joined Run Wild Fred, and he's gone past him. And Statler now approaches the 23rd and final fence with a two-length advantage. A lovely leap over it. Run Wild Fred is in second place. Vanilla is in third. They're heading up the hill then. It is Statler now and Patrick Mullins. A five or six length advantage. He has pricked. He's got plenty left and he's run out a ready winner. Statler's the winner. Run Wild Fred in second position. Vanilla will be third. The judge might have to decide fourth money. Nearest to us is Pat's fancy. Further Thomas has beat the bullet. It will be a close between those. But it wasn't close for the win. Far from it. Authoritative performance.
Hello everybody and welcome back to day two of the 2022 Cheltenham Festival and the Reprieve Media CIC double handful coverage of the second day. My name's Paul Newman. We're going to crack on today. Hope you had a good day on the first day, everybody, here for the second day. Before you hear from me, it's over to Steve Allpress. Steve, over to you. Hi there. Thanks, Paul, for having me back for day two of our Cheltenham Festival preview. Um, before I go on to day two's runners, as t- at time of this recording, it's um, the day before the Tuesday's card. Um, obviously, the excitement's building. Um, we're looking forward to a great week ahead of us. Uh, we've got some cracking races to tune into and hopefully... Um, Hopefully we'll get some winners along the way. I'll be travelling to Cheltenham both Tuesday and Wednesday this year. Um, I don't normally do two consecutive days. However, I'm usually one for the opening day. I love the opening day. I always find that um, those um, grade ones early on in the card, obviously the Supreme Losses Hurdle, the Arkle Chase and the Champion Hurdle, I always um, like to watch them races live. Um, so day ones are usually um, a day for me that I would attend. Um, obviously, day two I'll be going this year as well. Um, purely down to um, the fact that the champion chase is a is a race not to miss for me. Uh, Shishkin and Ergamen, Shakan Poursois, you can't really ask for anything else. They're, it's a cracking race on paper and I hope it lives up to our expectations. As you well know from last year, I'm a massive fan of Shishkin. He's done nothing wrong up to now. Um, you know, I'm confident, I'm excited, and I just hope he, he does the business really. But we'll go on to that um shortly, that race anyway. For now we'll we'll start with race one on the card for day two and which is the Ballymore Novices Hurdle. Um Again, we have a small field, but field with uh, a lot of quality. Um, obviously, the market leader is Sir Gerard. He's recently switched from the Supreme to the Ballymore. Um, is this a good move? I'm not. I'm not sure. Either way, I think obviously we're going to find out on Wednesday. I, I do feel the horse is a is a high quality horse, and I think the form he's shown already. Um, you know, there's no question that um, it will be good enough um, based on ability. However, my only concern would be the trip, the extra half a mile. I'm just not convinced um, that it's that it's something that he wants. Uh, I don't think he's crying out for that extra extra half a mile myself. But um, you know, I'm not saying he wouldn't get it, but it was just a little little thing in the back of my mind that would be a slight concern. Obviously, of the others, you've got a couple of other strong Irish contenders against him. Journey with me uh, from the Henry de Bromhead Yard. Very impressive last season in his um, in his sole bumper run. He's had two runs this season um, over hurdles, the first of which um, he dispatched Kilcrut and uh, Manella Kruner. He looked um, visually impressive that day, certainly for his... Um, first start of the campaign and um i feel um he's a horse that, uh you know has a big future ahead of him uh i think um he might be a horse that would probably go up in trip again further down the line and maybe even a even a fence would see the best of him but for now i do feel the ballymore is the right race for him and i do feel um it'll certainly be bang there at the end um, free stripe life. We'll go on to him. He ran behind Mighty Potter earlier in the season, uh, in his first start over hurdles. Uh, a little bit unlucky that day. Um, didn't jump fluently, squeezed through him a little bit, but he finished off his race well. And then at the Dublin Festival behind Sir Gerard, he ran well again, where he was runner up that day. And I feel the step up in trip will suit him as well. Um, of the others, um, Stage Star, he's worth a mention from the Paul Nichols Yard. They're quite keen on on him and um, 
I can see, I can certainly see why. He won the shallow hurdle um, at Newbury uh, just around Christmas time. And um, he's another one that's going in the right direction. Uh, shallow hurdle winners don't really have a good record in the Ballymore, which, you know, would raise slight doubts. But just on what he's shown this year, he's, uh, he's a worthy contender and it'll be interesting to see what he can do in this race. Of the others, I think the only other one we really need to mention is uh, Iron Maximus. Um, as much as I think Iron Maximus is a horse with uh, a fair bit of potential, I just feel that he's still a little bit raw and maybe this is a race a little bit too much too soon for him. Um, he ran well behind Hillcrest last time, but he still looked raw and green to me. And I just feel that this um, this race on Wednesday will just be a little bit um, a bridge too far for him at this stage of his career. I think that's all all we need to go through really on the on the Ballymore. Uh, my selection would be Journey with me, just uh, just on the basis I think I think the horse is um, is improving with every run. I think it will stay strongly, and I think the decent ground. Um, will benefit him as well. Whereas I just feel Sir Gerard, as as good as he is, and he is a horse that I'm um, interested in wherever he goes. I just I just have a slight concern regarding the trip. So journey with me, and free stripe life would be the two that would interest me most in this race. Fantastic, Steve. Thank you very much for taking a look at the first race of the day. The Ballymore Novices Hurdle. And can I just take this opportunity to thank you very much for taking the time to do this preview over the first two days and hopefully for the rest of the week. It's very much appreciated. All right, the Ballymore Hurdle to me, I think it's a great race. You are right there. There's some very nice horses in here. I'm going to start off with the top one, Sir Gerhard. Five out of six races it has won. And it also won the 2021 Festival Bumper. It's a grade one winning hurdle already on its most recent start. The pedigree is top class on the flat. It's from the family of the top class flat horse Zafine that uh, won the St. James's Palace Stakes, trained by Mick Shannon. Now, to me, I didn't think I was more impressed with its first run than its second. I didn't think it jumped very well on the second, but it's so quick that can they travel with it? That is the key. It couldn't be too quick from on the flat, but I do think it needs to jump better. Uh, Three Stripe Life is an interesting horse as well. It was uh, behind Sir Gerard in the 2021 bumper and also last time over hurdles. It's half brother to a horse that's already won a grade two mare's chase this year called Bally Shannon Rose. And the dam is a half sister to the US grade one winning hurdler and a listed flat third, Hirapur. And it's not a badly bred horse in its own right, really. It's from an Aga Khan family of the German Group 2 and dual Irish dual listed winner and moderate jump sire, Hu Shang. Not one I was familiar with. The next horse really could be anything. I think I've watched it go around a few times. It looks to a total class. Is Journey with Me? It's the horse is unbeaten, but one thing I will say is it's never raced in Pat and Company. It's half brother to a solid horse really in handicap chases called a uh, Yorkist. The Dam, though, is a half sister to Racing Demon, who used to be trained by uh, Henrietta Knight and later on in his career by Mick Shannon. <laughs> Never thought I'd say that um, when talking about the Cheltenham Festival. Um, the second dam is a half sister to Mary Gale. You know, so there's there's top potential in that horse, top ceiling. You know, so it wouldn't surprise me if it took the step up to Pat and Company in its stride. Stage star, it's an interesting horse, really, because you look at it last year. It's behind Napa's Hill in two graded bumpers last year. Napa's Hill it has struggled this year. There's no other way to describe it. And I've looked at Nappers. It's, it's quite a nicely bred horse. Uh, it won the Grade 1 Shallow Hurdle Stage Star last time out. It's unbeaten over hurdles. And the dam of it, Sparky May, was actually runner-up in the 2011 Mayor's Hurdle at the festival behind Quivega. And she was also a Grade 2 winner. You know, you can't rule that horse out. I am Maximus. Well, you'd expect to see this horse at Royal Ascot more than you would the Cheltenham Festival when I looked at the pedigree of it. You know, it's a lightly, it's been listed, placed over hurdles. But if you look at the it, one run in its bumper form, it actually did beat my Drogo, who I, I've got down as a top class horse. And, and what, he was one of my 
leading lights at the festival this year. Uh, the dam of it is a listed place on the flat for the work timers in France. But then it's a US flat pedigree because the second dam is half sister to two stallions, unbridled. That was one of the one of the top American sires. Won the Kentucky Derby in the Breeders' Cup. And another horse that won the Wood Memorial and sired a few out there called uh, Cahill Road. Yeah, that's an interesting horse, that. As is the next one uh, from, uh, from a family, from uh, connections I do, I do like. What, what do you want? You know, they've always highly tried it. It was behind Kill Quirit in a grade two bumper. And last time out, they were tried it in a grade one novice hurdle and it was behind uh, Jinto. But I think if people watch that race, they will see that it travelled all right. Yeah, I like the horse. It's a very well-bred horse. You know? It's half-brother to a grade one, grade three winning novice chaser, and a grade two and listed winning hurdler hardline, uh, Gigginstown horse. The dam is a full sister to a 136 rated grade two bumper winner, Crocodile's Rock, that used to be trained by uh, John Joe O'Neill, as well as the dam of a horse I, try, I found trained by Noel Mead. That's, I'm looking at the bumper later. I don't know if it's in there. But it's an unbeaten listed bumper winner called the Model Kingdom. And that is by the same sire as this, the, the German horse, uh, A. Zavosky. It's not owned by the same people. Second dam is a half-sister to the 154 rated group one placed bumper and hurdler winner and a dual grade three listed winning hurdler spirit leader. And she, she bred some very nice horses as well. She's the dam of the 163 rated grade one winning hurdler Prince of Scars and the 154 rated Grade B winning Handicap Chaser and Grade 2 winning Hurdler Folsom Blue. And also rated 144 rated Grade 1 and Grade 3 winning Hurdler. That's my man, a JP Manus horse. You know, that's a very nice horse as well. So I think that could be a big prize there. The rest, the other three, I've, I've not considered them. They've, they've, raised, they've ran two out of 16 races between them and they look to have a lot to find on the form. And I've looked at the pedigree of the rest and I thought, they're all very nice horses, these. It's a very tough race to predict, having looked at it. You know, I, would I chance the Gerard at odds on in this race? Well, I'd have to be, I'd have to be some supremely confident. I probably know, I've probably watched him on the gallops for the last five weeks, I think, looking against the opposition. So, Gerard, I'm a massive fan. But at the odds, I'm going to have to chance journey with me, I think. And I've looked at the odds. I think that'll give people a run each way. I'm not necessarily saying it's going to win. This horse here could finish fifth. It's been beaten by five good horses, four good horses, you know. It's a very good race. My advice would be to write these, not get a pen and paper as soon as we've finished this broadcast and write these names of these horses down because they're all quite decent pedigrees. They've all got decent form, the, the ones, ones I've talked about. But my selection for the race, very tentative selection, in what is a very, very deep race, is journey with me. If you see somebody showing any of the signs of a stroke, you don't have to think about it, you just dial 999. Use the fast test. F. Face. Has their face fallen on one side? Can they smile? A. Arms. Can they raise both arms and keep them there? S. Speech. Is their speech slurred? T. Time. Time to call 999 if you see any one of these signs. Act fast, make the call, dial 999. Whoa! Look how much saturated fat is in these chocolate biscuits. It's surprising how much is in our food and drinks. For us kids, eating too much saturated fat can lead to harmful fat building up inside, which we can't see, increasing the risk of heart disease or stroke when we get older. So be food smart. Download the free Change for Life food scanner app and start making healthier choices today. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the day two coverage of the 2022 Cheltenham Festival here on Reprieve Media CIC Double Handful. I'm Paul Newman. We're going to take a look now at the second race of the day. It used to be called the RSA Chase. Um, over now to Steve Allpress to take a look at the race. Steve, over to you. So then, on to the Brown Advisory. Novices Chase, formerly known as the RSA Chase. Well, th this is a race in years gone by where we've seen some real nice horses. And um, we could be in to see another one in the shape of Brave Man's Game. 
I've been a massive fan of this horse since the first time I saw him at Newbury over hurdles last season. Being honest, I was a little bit disappointed with him in the Ballymore last season. However, you know, looking looking back at it, Bob Ollinger is a is a seriously good horse, and I just feel that maybe Brave Man's Game um, its future was over fences, and certainly this season it looks to be that way. He's they've, he's been pretty well campaigned this year. I, I feel like they've not they've not hidden away from anything. Um, They've, they've had him out on the race course, you know, a fair, fair amount of times. So I don't think they've overcooked him and I don't feel they've undercooked him either. I think they've prepared him pretty well for this. His jumping, obviously, those who know him, he jumps beautifully. Um, he, he travels pretty nice, um, probably a little bit behind the bridle. I wouldn't say he travels, um, uh, you know, over, over strongly, uh, but certainly his, his jumping is his main asset. And he definitely stays well as well, which obviously you need in a in a three mile um, novice chase like this around Cheltenham. Of the others, um, I don't think it's it's a penalty kick by any means. Um, the likes of a Hoy Senor, um, as 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 much as he was um, beaten at Kempton by Brave Man's Game, I just feel on the day he wasn't quite right, and I feel like Cheltenham will suit a Hoy Senor um, a fair bit more than Kempton did. Obviously, uh, Phoenicia Williams uh, recently has switched her horse, La Homme Press, from the Turners um, to the Brown Advisory. That horse has put in a few nice runs as well, and I could certainly make a case for that one. Um, of of the others, you can look look through them all, and um, you, could, you could give them like... You know, each way shouts, the ones like Capadano, who ran behind um, Bob Ollinger last time. Um, horses like Fury Road. They've, they've all got, um, you know, they've all got some nice form tied in. But for me, but for me in this race, it is all about Brave Man's Game. I've been a big fan of this horse from the first time I've seen him and I'm not going to desert him at this stage. But I, I, I must stress that I do fear a Hoy Senor. He's, he's one of those horses that he'll get out in the lead and he'll just jump fence to fence and gallop. And those horses can be quite tricky to pass. So Brave Man's Game will have to be on his A game to beat him. Which obviously I hope and think he will do. But um, I'm under no illusions that um, it's not going to be easy by any means. So anyway, my selection for the Brown Advisory, as mentioned, is Brave Man's Game. I really hope this one can uh, can can go in and go on to win next year's King George because I feel I feel that this um, Brown Advisory would just be a stepping stone for him um, for next year's King George. I think he's a lovely horse with a with a huge future, and hopefully it works out that way for him on Wednesday. So yep. Brave Man's Game is my selection for the Brown Advisory. Fantastic, Steve. Thank you very much for taking a look at the second race of the day, the race formerly known as the RSA Chase. I mean, what a fantastic race this is. Easily the strongest race of the week I've seen so far. I mean, I can make a case for a good few of these on form and pedigree. Some of them both. RSA Chase, here we go. Brave Man's Game. Top of the market, and worthily so. He won a grade one over hurdles. But to me, he looked a bit vulnerable over hurdles. It didn't really convince me at all, one bit. This season, Brave Man's Game has looked a totally different horse over fences. I have to admit that. He jumps well, he travels well, and he does look a lot more convincing. I will say that about the horse. Lahom Press, the Venetia Williams train runner, is interesting. It's won five out of eight starts. It's unbeaten over fences. Grade one and grade two winner already. And you have to respect her, any horse that she runs in a race like this because her horses do stay and she's a shrewd judge. Hoy Senor, uh, the Aintree Hurdle winner last year, uh, is a dual grade two winner over fences already. It's been behind Brave Man's Game earlier this season as well. It always seems to have a good go. Seems sure to make a bold bid. But I'm not too sure about this one. I don't know why, I'm just not. I don't think it can beat Brave Man's Game, for a start. Capadano, 
to me, looks risky. The progressive in handicap hurdles last season, but he, Bob Ollinger beat it a couple of starts ago. And if you look last time, it, the jumping of it wasn't great. You know, you don't want to be making mistakes in races around here at the Cheltenham Festival. You know, I think others look more solid than him. Beacon Edge is an interesting one, I think. It's already won a grade one chase this year. You know, it was fourth in the stayers last year. The dam is a half-sister to a horse that was second in this race in 2011. Behind a horse called Boston's Angel, called Jesse's Dream. The second dam is half-sister to a horse that's also won a grade B handicap chase, Warming Bull. Dickens Town again, so they know the family quite well, you know. So I couldn't necessarily rule that one out. Fury Road, my old mate, Fury Road, well, he has to go down as a bit of an enigma, really, on his day, like he showed when he beat Beacon Edge on, on, to win a grade one novice chase earlier in the season. On his day, he's a very good horse. You know, but these days, unfortunately for me, are, are few and far between. You know, if you look, his form at the track is quite good. He was third in a race with Monkfish and latest exhibition in the 2020 Albert Bartlett. I mean, if he can repeat that, he's going to go close in any race. Very well bred horse as well. What made me latch on to him a few years back was when he was a novice hurdler. You know, he's out of an unraced dam who is a half sister to 2019 Grade One winning novice hurdler City Island won the Ballymore. In both out of second dam who is an unraced half sister to four time Grade One and five time Grade Two winning hurdler Morley Street. Also listed place on the flat and four time Grade Two winning hurdler Granville again. You know, some top-class hurdlers in this horse. I fancied him for the Stayers last year, and he ran an awful race when he was 4-1 to one on the day for the Stayers. And I don't know. I think they, I'll be interested to see what happens to him tomorrow. Gayard de Manil, I think, is another risky one. I think if people look at his form, they'll see that he's one of these rare, rare horses that their chase rating is lower than their hurdle rating. Now, he's a dual-grade one winning hurdler. He was ahead of Fury Road last time out, though. In a chase third, when behind, be, behind, you know, so, but I don't know, he's a risky horse, but he is good on his day. My old mate, three under through five, he's, he's, uh, he's seen me through the UK novice chase season quite well, I have to say, you know, but he's, it's sixth in the 2021 Albert Bartlett, and he's won two grade two races this year. He's half brother to a, a horse that won a grade three winning chaser, Ben Rubin, not really seen much of it this year. And the dam is, is quite well bred. She's a listed place half sister to a grade two winning chaser and listed winning hurdler Sanuva. And that is actually the dam of Horton Colours, the Willie Mullins horse. You know, some nice horses in there. A couple of grade three horses like Nick Noss and Hippamine, a uh, dual grade one, grade two, and a listed winning hurdler as well. You know, it's been interesting to see how that gets on. It's been racing small English fields. My heart says it, it might be up to it. But you never know. You never know. I could be wrong. Farouk Dalen, the next one, is, is a, an interesting horse, I think. If you look at parts of his form, it's got some good form. You know, it's beaten Beacon Edge. It's won a grade one chase. It also beat the Albert Bartlett winner last year, Vanilla, in a grade two hurdle over Christmas last year. It's won six out of nine races. You know, it's, they, they obviously, no, that's a place for the horse to, 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 to good effect. You know, I couldn't rule that one out. And then you've got one that I can't believe has turned up, really. And it's a massive price, I think, in Dusart. It's a very inexperienced horse, a bit like Constitution Hill today. You know, if you look at the horses, they've got very similar profiles, I think. The grade one placed hurdler on only his second start of his life in Aintree. That's incredible, you see. Even Constitution Hill was on his third start. You know, so you can argue, very similar. And then he's had two low-grade chase wins this season, where he's it's hard to really judge what he's achieved. One time he jumped out. The second time he didn't really beat anything. He's a very well-bred horse. He's related to a horse that's won at two Chapman festivals. Won the Arco and the Ballymore. Simon Singh. Trained by Nicky Henderson as well. And owned by the same, the same connections. This horse, I have to say, it could be anything. I, I, you know, if that won, I, I wouldn't be surprised. The last horse in the race, uh, Streets of Doyen. I just can't make a case for it. Just dismissed it. Over hurdles and fences, it looks held by a lot of these. This is an impossible race to call again, rather like the first. You know, it's very tough. You know, I can see myself, if the price is right, back in a few of these. But I couldn't 
possibly pick one. If you made me, which, which I know you're going to do, I would pick, when in doubt, pick Fury Road. That would be the, the, the thinking there. Although three under through five, I do think he's overpriced, but he's one of them that I think if they head him, you could, you could possibly say his chance is gone. You don't know. You know, he's a good horse, but he, he has looked as though he could be vulnerable to a bit of class, which, which he hasn't faced really in any of his English races. But I'll, I'll side with Fury Road because he's mixed with a lot of these. The English ones, I don't really fancy Brave Man's Game and Ahoy Senor. I don't really fancy him as strong as the Irish grade one horses, you know. Part of me thinks three under three five could beat the English two, Brave Man's Game and Ahoy Senor. But I could be I could be totally 100% wrong. Time will tell tomorrow. But for now, I'll give a tentative each way selection on Fury Road. Do you like what you're listening to on Reprieve Media CIC? If you do, there are plenty of ways that you can support us as we continue. You can donate to the Reprieve Media CIC PayPal account. To do that, please head to our website where you will see a donate tab on the side of the site. Also, Reprieve Media CIC is now on Patreon. Why not head over there now and check out our page. Just search for Reprieve Media CIC on Patreon. Thank you very much for your support, people. And you are listening to Reprieve Media CIC. everybody and welcome back to the Reprieve Media CIC coverage of day two of the 2022 Cheltenham Festival. We're going to take a look at the feature race of the day now, the Grade 1 Queen Mother Champion Chase, which in my view promises to be one of the classic matches that we've seen in recent festival time between Shishkin and Inergamine. I'm not saying it's a two-horse race. But if you look at the who won the race last year, put the kettle on, ran to a mark of 162. Shishkin last time out, when it beat an Ergamine, ran to 181. So a lot of the others, even though Politolog, an outsider of the race, as, as a previous race winner, you know, there's some horses in there. They're all good horses, but there's a grade one. But these two here, second season chasers, to me, they look a different class. Shaq and Pussoir shows his best form in Ireland. New Bay Negra, I've never really been with the horse, but, but you can't argue that parts of his form do give him an outside chance. But to me, it's all about the two second season chasers, Shishkin and Anergamin. And to me, nothing has changed. I'll be with Shishkin all day long in this race. But again, it's just so short. I'll just be watching it, watching the race and enjoying it. Now, over to Steve for his look at the Grade 1 Queen Mother Champion chase. So then, now we will go on to the feature race of Day 2 of the Cheltenham Festival, which is the Queen Mother Champion chase. Um, in years gone by, we've seen some great champions win this race. The likes of Moscow Flyer, uh, Masterminded, Sprinter Sacra, 
Altior, and I'm really hopeful that um, Shishkin can add his name to Roll of Honor. I'll start off with Shishkin. Obviously, those who follow racing will know that he won the Supreme Novices Hurdle a couple of years ago, and then last season he went on to win the Arkle here at Cheltenham in um, decisive fashion. He's not done anything wrong up to now. Um, he had a little bit of a setback earlier on in the season, which delayed his reappearance. But since then, he's had two runs, the first of which was at Kempton over Christmas time. He looked like he just needed the run a little bit that day, but but he finished off his race well and um, the signs were there that he was back to his, his old self. Then it was the clash we'd all been waiting for at Ascot. The Victor Chandler chase between Shishkin and Energumen from Ireland. The highly touted Energumen that hadn't done anything wrong up to now. It was a cracking race, as you all know. Um, there was nothing between them on the day. And Shishkin just just um, found that little bit more under pressure when it when it come down when it come down to it. I just feel on that on that day on that day I've watched that race back a good few times now, and I just. I just feel on that day Shishkin wasn't quite at his best. That might purely be down to the fact that Energumen got him out of his comfort zone a little bit. I, I do um, I do bear that in mind, but I just feel that um, going right-handed and I just feel that Shishkin didn't quite jump um, as well as he could. And I feel um, the return to Cheltenham on the left-handed track is exactly what he wants. And I feel... I feel it'll be enough. If he puts his A1 race together, I feel um, he'll prevail in this race. Obviously, I've mentioned an Ergamen there. Clearly on form, he is the one to beat. I know there's, we've got Shakam Porsoir, Willie Mullins, his other horse in there. That is um, by no means no back number. But I do feel that even he has a little bit to find with both Shishkin and an Ergamen. Um Nube Negra from Dan Skelton Yard. He's a fair yardstick himself and a worthy contender. However, I do feel that this is this is a clash again between Shishkin and Energumen. And I just feel whoever puts their their best foot forward on the day will be the one here that prevails. I do feel that Shishkin just does that little bit more than Energumen, but but there's not much between them, obviously based on that last run it's fine margins here between winning and losing and i just i'm just gonna i'm just gonna uh, retain the faith in shishkin i just feel that um the track would suit him he powers up that hill and i just think he'll wear an ergamen down as the race goes on that's what i'm hoping anyway but that's what that's what deep down i, I truly believe will happen i think an ergamen We'll run, a, we'll run another massive race, but I just feel Shishkin's got his number. But he'll have to be at his best to win. Uh, that that I have, I'm under no illusions. He has to, he has to be at his best to win, because the Nergamen is a very, very good horse. I wouldn't um, put any anybody off anything else, but I just feel, you know, they have a good eight or nine, ten pounds to find with these other two. This could be one of the best Queen Mother Champion chases we've seen in a long, long time. It's, it's full of quality. So, yeah, my selection, my nap selection here for day two of the Cheltenham Festival is Shishkin for Nicky Henderson. If you see somebody showing any of the signs of a stroke, you don't have to think about it. You just dial 999. Use the fast test. F. Face. Has their face fallen on one side? Can they smile? A arms can they raise both arms and keep them there s speech is their speech slurred t time time to call 999 if you see any one of these signs act fast make the call dial 999 hello everybody and welcome back to the reprieve media cic double handful coverage of day two of the 2022 Chowton festival the last race we're going to take a look at in detail here on the second day is the last race of the day, the uh, champion bumper. It's a not really a race I ever have much of an interest in. I have enough flat horses on the flat to follow without looking at them over in the national hunt sphere. 
But I know that Steve is an absolute genius when it comes to National Hunt horses. Uh, probably the last four or five bumper horses that I've actually followed when they've been in bumpers, he's given me. So without further ado, let's hand over to the genius Steve Allpress for his look at what promises to be a very informative race, the champion bumper. Steve, over to you. So then on to the final race on the card for day two, which is the champion bumper. This is a race where in future, further down the line of these horses' careers, you'll look back and you'll find form lines, key form lines, where you see horses mixed in and you'll think, wow, that was that was a strong bumper. That tends to happen in races like this. You usually get a good few horses clash with big reputations. Some horses are a little bit more forward than others. Some are probably... Um, built and made for like chasing where others um, are more like s speed and hurdling dependent um so so you tend to have a mixture of horse in these bumpers um this year we've got again we've got a strong we've got several strong reputations in this race uh, this year's renewal um we'll start Fasal Vegas one of them from the Willie Mullin stable um, his stable companion, Redemption Day, is another. Um, they've both done nothing wrong up to now. And you've got uh, the Gordon Elliott trained American Mike. Um, made his debut at Down Royal and then went to Navan. Looked mighty impressive both times. He's another one that's, um, well, many believe, including myself, that he's going to be bang there in this race. We'll start with Vassal Vega. Um, he's a horse that there was a lot of talk talk around a lot of strong vibes even before this season started and um he's ran twice this season it ran at leopardstown um i think it was on boxing day um it was a nice debut traveled well and then quickened away nicely and then backed that up again at the dublin racing festival and i'd say it was e an even improved performance on his first run um again it was a little bit stronger race uh, travelled nicely and quickened away very well and that put him to the head of the market uh, for this year's renewal and um, based on what we've seen so far um, I certainly feel he is a worthy market leader. Um, his stable compa uh, companion, sorry, uh, Redemption Day, he um, he also ran over Christmas time, um, I think it was a couple of days after Vassal Vega's victory. He looked visually impressive too. Um, I was pretty taken by the way um, he travelled and he had a nice turn of foot as well and he he wasn't really asked to um, do much more than he than he did but he certainly looks like a horse that's got plenty of speed to me and um, you know even beyond uh, Wednesday's bumper he could be a horse that you're looking at for maybe the Supreme Novices hurdle in a year's time. So so he's one that you you have to you don't discount by any means in, in uh, Wednesday's race. Um, my selection for the race, so however, is American Mike, as I, I mentioned. Um, he went to Down Rural, then Navan. Um, usually a route that um, Gordon Elliott sends his best bumper horses to. And um, I, I feel that there's been very strong vibe for this horse in um recent months um you don't often hear like his jockey jamie cod he's very very bullish about the horse and um you know usually when they start talking and um in these this kind of tone you usually get the impression that they've they're showing things at home that you you'd like to see so on on that basis i'm i'm gonna go with american mike here it's very difficult to to get a, a true gauge accurate gauge on who is who is like the number one out of these bumper horses because you know the, the after time they're running in these races against um inferior opposition on bad ground and you just you just don't really get a, a, a real true indication of um how good that how good they are you only really get you only really get to find out uh at the festivals like this and i don't think um we truly know anyone truly knows who is the best of these until they race on wednesday 
And e even then, that doesn't really necessarily mean that further down the line they are going to be the best of this bunch. As I, as I mentioned before, some of these horses are built differently. They're, some are hurdlers and some are chasers for the future. But um, nevertheless, we're, it's going to be a cracking race on Wednesday. And I think a lot of opinions are going to be divided between these three horses. They're, they're, they're three horses with a lot of potential and uh, it'll be good to see where they go, um, you know, from, well, on Wednesday and then from there on, really. So, yeah, exciting race, but I'm going to go for American Mike. Very exciting. Fantastic appraisal there, Steve. Yes, you're totally 100% correct in a lot of what you say there. This race is the stepping stone, a very small part, just an introductory run, really. These are National Hunt horses bred to um, jump obstacles and there isn't any. It's just to get them used to the track and the surroundings. And a lot of these horses in years to come will prove to be decent. Um, I couldn't really disagree with a lot of what you said. It's like, like I said, I don't really look at this race. But I don't really follow bumpers at all. I did look at a couple, though. I did look at the pedigree of some of them. All of them, sorry. And I did look at uh, any that were out of decent flat mares, with it being a flat race. Like you said, Facel Vega, out of the 162 rated champion hurdler, Vega, American Mike, is out of a grade B and a grade 3 winning chaser called American Jenny. Her herself was rated 145, you know, so it's a nice horse. Madman's Game could be interesting. That's a half brother to a 148 rated dual grade 1 and grade 2 placed hurdler. Gentleman's Game. Music Drive. He's a half-brother to a grade two and a dual-listed French hurdle winner, street name, and a dual-French grade three hurdle-placed horse called Conig Drive. Ain't no sunshine. It's very well-bred. You know, it's from the family of the last year's Mayor's Hurdle winner, Black Tears. Also, Early Beach, grade one, grade three, and listed winning hurdler, Early Beach, and also a winner on the flat. And a grade B-placed, grade three, fourth, dual-listed-placed hurdler, Screaming Rose. Black Tears herself, she's actually out of a grade two place, grade three and dual listed winning hurdler called Our Girl Sally. Also a grade three place chaser. And there's Lock Bart in there as well, a grade three place chaser. You know, Crazy Rose is the link between the two. She's the third dam of Black Tears and the second dam of Ain't No Sunshine. Interesting horse. Authorised Speed comes into the, the second category, the dam was a decent flat horse. She was she won two French listed races. And she's also listed place bumper horse authorised speed was in December. And last but not least, I'm gonna look at our Jester. Uh the four time listed place dam on the flat. Chill Row Leg. I know I've said that wrong, it's Gaelic. So apologies to any Irish listeners, but I just can't pronounce that. Trained by Huey Morrison. Also half brother to a listed bumper winner. And grade three and dual listed flat placed horse, urban artist. You know, so interesting horses in the bumper. But for me, I wouldn't be confident in this race to back any of them. It's not a horse race I follow. I did watch Fasil Vega last time out and it was it looked good, I must admit. So I do think that will be a tough nut to crack looking at what I've seen. But I'm sure there's something lurking in there. So without further ado, we're going to crack on now with some selections. Steve, it's over to you, sir. Right, that's the end of the preview for day two. Uh, just to go through um, and confirm my selections to you. My selection for the Ballymore Novices Hurdle. Um, as mentioned, there's two of them. Uh, Journey With Me and Free Stripe Life. In the Brown Advisory Novices Chase, Brave Man's Game. The Queen Mother Champion Chase, Shishkin, and the Champion Bumper, American Mike. My nap selection is Shishkin in the Queen Mother Champion Chase. And my each way selection is um this this one's gonna be this one's gonna be in one of the other races on the Wednesday card. Uh, the Grand Annual Handicap Chase, Amarillo Sky. From the Colin Tizard stable is my each way selection. Thank you for listening and I'll be back for Thursday's um, selections soon. Thank you. 
Fantastic, Steve. Thank you very much. Some very strong sele selections there. I'm sure very nice selections. I'm sure. Good luck with all your selections on day two, sir. And may I again take this opportunity to say thank you very much for finding the time to do these previews over the first two days. And hopefully the last two days, we're at the halfway stage now. It is uh, very much appreciated. Right, on to my selections now. Before, before I uh, give a selection, I will just say I am very surprised that Steve picked one in a handicap, I must admit. That, that could be worth something, worth taking a very uh, close look at. Right, my selections now coming up quickly. But before I give them, I just want to touch on a horse that's running in the cross-country chase. J at uh, four ten. JP McManus has bought a horse in France called uh, Prengard. It was bought uh, it, uh, just before Christmas, and it's been transferred to Edinburgh Bolger. It actually won its last five French races before it came to Ireland, including cross country races. It had a poor run over hurdles in Ireland, though. That's a typical sort of, you know, we're messing with the mark type run. The sort of run that Easy's Land has been putting in, you know. I don't like to see that. The dam of it, Nicoline, has got good form. She's a grade three hurdles winner in France. You know, and the second dam is also a half-sister to a grade two place, grade three French hurdle winner called Chalet. So unlike a lot of these French horses that come for these sort of races, there is some it there in this one. It's not a bad horse, you know. be interesting to see if there's any money for it. I'll be watching it in the market, see what happens with that one. Round to some selections. Uh, in the 130 at Cheltenham, the Ballymore, I'll be going with Journey With Me each way. In the 210, in what looks a very tough race, I will be siding with Fury Road each way. And uh, as I've also mentioned, Prengard in the 410. If there's market support, if it drifts marketably, I'll probably leave it. What I will mention is also touched on yesterday briefly is Ashdale Bob. That is actually running in the Coral Cup tomorrow at 2.50. So in a handicap. So I will probably, I will probably chance that. I like the also. It's looked more comfortable over hurdles this year than it, than it did in Novice Chasing. It fell on its debut behind Bob Ollinger. Then they tried it again. And it didn't really convince me one bit, nor then. Uh, that's all for me, really, on, on day two. Good luck, everybody who's, who's, who's taking part today. Steve, thank you very much yet again. I've been Paul Newman. We hope to be back for the next two days, all things being equal. But for now, thank you very much for listening and all the best.